This video is brought to you by Straight Goods News, Canada's alternative online news source. Visit straightgoods.ca. I come to public life. Oh, there's so much in there. I mean, I the what I still think that very few people recognize that they've uh, that, that under the Fisheries Act changes, there's a potential constitutional challenge. I don't think the issue of the constitutionality of passing on fisheries management to the provinces has yet come to light. Now, of course, people know there's changes to the Fisheries Act because of the protest of the four former fisheries ministers. But the fact that the committee even heard this evidence that there could very well be a constitutional challenge on the basis of the precedent of the BC Supreme Court of Alexander Morton versus BC on the agriculture issue, where BC and the Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans had made a, an arrangement to have agriculture monitored by the province instead of by the federal government. BC Supreme Court ruled you can't do that for constitutional reasons. So that's one. Uh, I don't want to reveal too many of my uh, ones that nobody's noticed yet because they're going to be in the quiz, but there certainly are many elements of this bill that can continue to surprise me. I mean, there's there's whole new departments that are being created. There's whole laws that are being repealed. There are new laws being put in place, and all in the context of uh, a budget implementation bill. And today in the House, we continue to hear, I mean, again, erroneously, one a parliamentary secretary for the government got up in the House just before question period and said, this bill was tabled March 29th. No, it wasn't. The budget was tabled March 29th. The bill was tabled April 26th. There's still a vast confusion, even among conservatives, as to the difference between Mr. Flaherty's budget and this outrageous budget implementation bill. And then the claim that we've had more time to debate it than any other budget bill. Well, most budget implementation bills between 95 and the year 2000, the average length of a budget implementation bill was 12 pages. You didn't need a lot of time to study it. And last year in the House, the budget implementation bill was also maybe about 12 to 14 pages. I voted for it. There was nothing wrong with the Conservatives' budget implementation bill in 2011. It was actually a number of fairly innocuous measures. This thing is a monstrosity, and we never have had adequate time to examine even portions of it. And there are still things that will continue to come to light. What do you think the chances are that the government, the government whip will be telling these people not to turn up? I think the chances are very high. The government whip will tell his members not to show up to take my little quiz. But it's a fair quiz, and I think some might show up just to show they've read it. It's up to them to decide, and we'll do a little... It, they just need to get a passing grade. They don't need to get a perfect score. I, I just think it's important to underline for Canadians that I do not believe that most members of Parliament have ever read the bill. Full stop. Okay. So the passing grade, so say 50%, is that still a passing grade for knowing what's in the bill? I think 55% is a passing grade. Um, would you have a comment on um, Bruce Heyer's suggestion of having more of a lottery seating in the House? I completely support it. I think it's a great idea. I hate partisanship in the House, and I you saw more of that kind of pack mentality uh, during the long nights of votes, where every time Stephen Harper stood up, there's mad cheering from all the Conservatives, and then Tom Mulcair stands up, and there's mad cheering. It's, it's, it really is absurd. It's a waste of promise. It's a, it does disrespect to the House of Commons to act as though we're compete, competing teams and we don't want to cheer wildly. Were we seated randomly, that would be much less likely. Were we seated randomly, there'd be much greater opportunity for forming friendships and alliances outside your pack, outside your team. And I think that would be healthy for democracy. So I support Bruce Iyer's proposal 100%. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you.